everyone, welcome back. We're playing more Dream Daddy. Uh, things are about to get a little bit goth in here because we're about to date Damien. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to find out a little bit more about him. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should, I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey dude, you seem cool. We should hang out sometime. sometime. <laughs> I sit there for a minute before I see that Damien's typing. But then he seem but then he keeps typing. And typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sit my coffee and, and the computer finally dings. Dead Tasmo. <laughs> I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter, for as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I didn't, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in as gentlemanly manner as, as I would have liked. Oh, whoa, those, oh, whoa, there's more. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden, should it, should it please you. Till then, adieu. Yours humbled, D. Blood March. Signing your Facebook messages and text messages is a very dad thing to do. I will say that much. Uh, I stare at the screen and reread the letter several more times. Hey, Amanda. Can you help me with something? Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your back pimples. Ew. No, no. Can you in interpret this for me? I turn the computer to Amanda, and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand NetSpeak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? Oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids got over saying LOL and LMAO or whatever, and decided that, that the, what they really needed to do was bring it back to the 1800s. So what do I do? Where's your pen and quill? What? Did you forget to unpack the pen and quill? Dad, how will we address the noble nobleman in regards to your upcoming debutante ball? Okay, now I know you're messing with me. Father, without, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. Or our dowry. Or... So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time, and now you're reciting things you, things you know about it back to me, aren't you? Like the first five pages, then I read a review of the movie. Still got a B, though. Great, so what do I say to Damien? I got this. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. <laughs> Regards. Dead Tasmo. Amanda hits send and smiles at me. Well, I suppose that's that. I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor, estate. The gothic architecture looms above the other ho homes in the cul-de-sac. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door, and I look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat, bat's head door knocker back, and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps in, into the foyer, noting the oil portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. As I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. Hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Dad Tasmo, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien sta standing at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. What's, uh, what's with the door slamming shut? Uh -huh. Oh, sorry, there was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked? Hmm. I, accident I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy, o and the creepy oil paintings? Hmm. I, like oil I like oil paintings. Right. Hmm. Right. <laughs> Please, let me show you around. Okay. Damien leads me around this house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. This is one of the older homes on the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might, su might suggest. 
Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of, of any modern dwelling. We walked past a door covered in, in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black parade poster. Did they listen to My Chemical Romance in the Victorian era? Do kids still listen to, to My Chemical Romance? That seems unlikely somehow. That's my son's room. You know how the, the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward. There's more to see. We reach a door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with a flourish. And this is the, the library. Sunlight streams in from floor-to-ceiling floor arch windows. The walls are lined with, pack, with packed bookshelves, and even more books are scattered over the period-appropriate furniture. Damien is, Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Hmm. Let's see what these butterflies are about. I walk up to the glass display of pinned bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. I pinned I pinned them all myself. Maybe I could show you maybe I could show you how sometime. I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my finger. Ah, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? No. <laughs> uh, let's look out the window. I walk to the window and I'm greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on, Craig on the lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughters on his back. Damn. He sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. Damn. <laughs> Did you know that Victorians spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Wait, really? No, but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. Pick up a book. You know, Dad Tasmo, in the Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the, mo the more tawdry novels would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. Naruto struggles against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he's, he looks up at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. What? Okay, I think that's enough. Bound fan fiction. That's very impressive. Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back onto the shelf. That's a rare book from a rare book from my private collection. Please, will you join me for tea? I follow Damien to his sitting room, where finger foods have already been set out upon a beautiful tiered silver tray. I take a seat on one of the high-backed chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having a high tea. I, th I never thought, thought I'd get to do this. Damien smiles to himself. What? Oh. It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it when in fact the high refers to both the later time of day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they're served. Oh. My dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Did I just get well actually goth style? Uh... <laughs> Your home is really impressive, because it is. It is very impressive looking. It seems like you've really put a lot of work into this place. The thank you. No one's ever complimented my home before. Hell, I can barely get matching salt and pepper shakers in my place and look, and look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. That's very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? How delightful. Well, when I was a young boy, my father, did he take you into the city? Huh. Sorry? Haha, <laughs> did you guys see a marching band? Hmm. I'm afraid I, I don't un understand. You're serious? Of course. But it's, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. Seriously? I actually don't know, don't know what he's referencing. I'd love to see a marching band. Nevertheless, I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals grew into a sort of a, a, an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and, lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? I like not dying when I, when I catch a cold. He takes a sip of tea. 
I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about, about the Victorian era, and to try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admi admittedly horrid. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same. It's very smart. Tell me, Dad Tasmo, do you have any hobbies? Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way that you care about this stuff. Well, I'd love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing, and quite honestly, rather attractive. Please, do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. Um... I learned how to juggle once. Which is sort of true. I can juggle, like, scarves. I can't juggle, like... Oh, he didn't like that. Gravity is an, in Gravity is an, is an interesting thing, and, um... I believe that juggling is the pinnacle of humankind's interaction with the gravitational arts. Interesting. I started out with scarves, but now I can comfortably juggle balls. I cannot juggle balls. Juggling pins is currently um, out of my purview. Damien looks at me quizzically, but shrugs it off. We finish our tea and, and finger sandwiches. Come, I have one more thing to show you. Damien takes me around the back of his home, where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it, and butterflies flit lazily through the air. My garden. It's... beautiful. Thank you. Victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously. You see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as, these, as even the style in which the ribbon, ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off of, off of a vine. Lilium bulbiferium. Lil Lilium bulbiferum. The orange lily. What do you think this one means? Um, this one sounds the most possible. Three cheers for sweet revenge. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. Okay. Well, and that's precisely why floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Hmm. I forget what snapdragons and honeysuckle look like, but snapdragon has dragon in the name, so that's that's definitely pretty cool. Because they're cute, and you can do that thing where you squeeze them so it looks like they're talking. What a lovely choice. I'll have to remember that when I put together a, a bouquet for you. He, he, would, he would put together a bouquet for me? Nobody's ever given me a, bu a bouquet before. I follow Damien down to the... I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly a phone rings. Oh, Dad Tasma, will you excuse me? I must take this. He pulls a cell phone out of, out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a rotary phone. Go for it. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy, enjoy the, the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I had put a little more effort into that garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. Oh hey, a gargoyle. Oh no, I knocked over the gargoyle! Oh no. I gotta fix the gargoyle. Uh, oh god, it's like a shrine of the silver monkey. Um, nope. Okay. Oh boy. Uh... No? No? Oh god. Okay, that's the head. So I think this is the piece that goes here. Somehow. This looks like it... No? Like that, maybe? What about... Okay, maybe this is the piece that goes here. No? How do you fix the Scargoyle? Uh... Oh no. I've tried, I've tried like every combination here, it feels like. 
Okay, made some. Not, clearly not that piece. Um. No. Okay, this gargoyle's. F I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Damien. How is that rank A? All right. Crap, crap, crap. I can't figure this out. Uh oh, here, here comes Damien. He looks upset. Hope it's not about the garg. My sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so. Dad Tasmo, did you break my gargoyle? All I did was lean on it. What? I just had it installed last week. I. No, no matter. I suppose it will give me a chance to work on my masonry, masonry skills. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm, I'm afraid I must take my leave. That's no problem, dude. Everything all right? Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything is perfectly fine, but I, uh. It's Lucian. What's wrong? He appears to have, well, his teacher needs me to come to the school, post-haste. Do you need help? Oh no, you, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. Huh. You're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. Let's go. Um... I keep seeing, like, a character, like, just move off this the screen just as it's floating. Uh, Damien and I Damien and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. Hey Damien, you're you're here in record time. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to, to the My Kids Are in Trouble rodeo. What is it this time? This, Damien, you have to you have to see to believe. Damien and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through, us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into darkness. Watch your step. I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I led it into the depths of the school, I, I recall the antics I got into it as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of the out of creepy basements. We find an, another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the of the basement. With him are Lucian and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucian has a bloody nose. Thanks for coming. I can't I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around at the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucian tried to kill me. The room falls silent. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was just trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. Uh, <laughs> I have some, some bad news for you about what that does. You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Lucian, did you try to cask of Amontillado, Ernest? I'm neither confirming or, nor, <laughs> I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turn to Damien and whisper to him. What's, uh, what's Cask of Amontillado? It's a classic Edgar, it's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets, gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to, to his cellar with the promise of wine of a fine vintage, and buries him alive behind a brick wall. It's a lovely story. So wait, Lucian, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, but then he realized that I had lied about the wine. And you were cackling, and you, and you were cackling maniacally. That sort of tipped, tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad, it took you 20 minutes? Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of on the cask of Amontillado, and it took you twenty minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into into an elaborate ruse. Did you even read the story? I read the first five pages and then and then read a re review of the movie. Huh? It's only five made. It's only five pages long, and there is no movie. Haha. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for me. Uh... Actually, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. Damien and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature, and I did. I don't see a problem here. 
All right, I'm filing, filing this under what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucy in high five. The teacher starts to stomp up, up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Mr. Bloodmarch, you too. Thank you for your mediation. We all head up the stairs and out of the school in tense silence. Lucien has a much darker side than I expected. Lucien, Damien, and I all pile into my car and, and begin the drive home. Lucien immediately puts, up the ho puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can see that you're struggling. So if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about, about your feelings, we can do that too. Maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I know how much you want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. I love you, son. Lucien, con Lucien continues staring out, out of the window. Love you, too. We spend the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucien hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front, in front of you. He and I have a lot, of, a lot we need to work out. It's all right. And all things considered, Lucien's bricklaying was pretty good. So there's your, there's your silver lining. Maybe he can fix the uh, gargoyle that I f***ed up. There is that, yes. Um, I really admire how you handled that. You were a lot more diplomatic than I... You, you were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him. And I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It rarely does. You're a good dad. <laughs> See you around soon. It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Hmm. I come home to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket watching TV. I plop down next to her. Yo. What you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. Ugh, I hate this show. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made of recycled bo bottles. The tiny house hunting brothers watch them with, with bemused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two bed, two bath, shabby sheet cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg. <laughs> Why don't they, they just get a regular sized house? I... I don't know. Hmm. How'd afternoon tea go? It got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up Lucian since he tried to... Ah. He lured Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of a fine vintage and then tried to brick him into the wall, right? How did you know that? Has everyone read the story except for me? Yeah. Lucian live-streamed the entire thing. This entire day is beyond me. But otherwise it was a fun day. That Damien guy's a character, but he's really good company. And a surprisingly diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Alright, let's see how we did on our date with Damien. A. Alright, well, cool. Alright. So, date with, date with Damien went pretty good. Uh, we have three dads left to date. Uh, I will try to get these out a little bit uh, more frequent. Um, now the holidays are, well, once the holidays are wrapped up, then hopefully I'll be, I'll, I'll be able to uh, do a little bit more of this. Um, yeah, all right. Um, so we've got, le so, so, so far left we have Brian, Hugo, and Joseph. Uh, all kind of, we're kind of at the, at the dark horse candidates at this, at this point, I feel. So yeah, uh, let me know who you want me to date next in the comments, and I will see you next time.